Hi and welcome to another physics lesson where we are jumping to a new topic uh, the topic of mechanical work okay so I'm going to add here just the word mechanical and the reason why is because mechanical work is a little bit different than the normal idea you have when I say the word work okay mechanical work is done okay mechanical work is done when a force moves causes an object to move okay when a force causes an object to move okay so if an object is not moving even if a force is being applied to it so imagine we have uh, let's go for a big boulder imagine we have a very big boulder here and some person really pushing very hard against this this boulder okay with all of his effort he's pushing this boulder if that boulder is not moving no work no mechanical work is being done this guy might be exhausted after trying to push this boulder for about an hour but he hasn't done any mechanical work okay so mechanical work is done when a force causes an object to move okay so let's look at a few examples so for one is um, that this topic was originally introduced when they had steam engines okay so let me try my best to uh, draw a steam engine <laughs> that's probably not even close to what they look like but um, let's imagine that is what they look like when steam engines were used to lift buckets of water from um, flooded mining holes okay so there is my steam engine applying a force of let's say 400 newtons okay there's 400 newtons to lift water out of a, a mine hole okay so with that in mind let's say it lifts it up for 20 meters so this distance is 20 meters then what is the work done well we need to first see what is the formula for work now work defined is work is the product product means multiply the product of force over distance okay so we said it causes the object to move so obviously if the object is moving it is displacing some distance okay so that force multiplied by that distance force is uh, work is equal to force times distance that would be the amount of work that is being done so let's see we are displacing this bucket for 20 meters um, with an applied force of 400 newtons in other words the applied work is equal to the applied force times the distance that that bucket has moved okay so the applied force is 400 newtons and the distance that it was applied over was 20 so the total amount of work done is 8,000 okay so what is the units well we know that force is in newtons and distance is in meters so the one unit we can use is called newton meters this is newton meters okay but the other unit that it most commonly takes is a new unit we introduce thing called joules joules so a joule one joule is one newton displacing so one joule is one newton displaced displacing an object one meters okay so let's look at a second example okay so let's look at a second example imagine we have a um, let's say we have a toy a toy trailer okay there's a toy trailer okay and this toy trailer is standing perfectly still on a smooth surface okay that's not making any angles so there's a smooth surface 
and it's not making any angle. What are the forces acting on it? Okay, well, it is obviously got a, a weight component. Okay, weight is weighing down, and because it's not moving, it means there must be an opposite force. That is the normal force acting against the weight. Okay, what is the work done by this normal force? So work is always done by a force. What is the work done by the normal force? Okay, well, that's the size of the force. Okay, but the object is not moving. I mean, this this trailer is not moving at all. So there's absolutely no displacement. There's no displacement happening at this point. So that's just zero. So what is the work done by the normal force? Well, in this case, it is simply none. There's no work done. Okay. So let's have a look at what will what will happen if I actually am applying a force. So let's take our trailer again. This trailer is a bit brighter than the first one, isn't it? Okay, so there's our trailer again, and this time this trailer is being pulled along by a, a toddler or a small child. And I want you to notice now something is as it moves horizontally um, on the surface that it's being dragged along, the force is being applied at an angle. Okay. Now we already saw that the normal force, this upward force, okay, is not doing any work. Okay, there's no work being done. And then that must mean that the only work being done by this force, F, is the force that is in the horizontal component. And that is one thing that you can uh, take to, to heart here, is that um, only the force, let me change the color there, only the force or the component of the force, only the component of the force in the direction of motion does any work, does the work. Okay, so if this force that is being applied at an angle has a vertical component or a component that is perpendicular to the motion and it has a component that is parallel to the motion. Only this component that is parallel to the motion is um, actually doing any work. The component that is vertic that is perpendicular to the motion is not doing any work. So if we were to look at our formula, here we have our formula that work, sorry, work is equal to the force times the distance. But the only force doing work is the parallel force. So it's the force that is parallel to the motion. Okay, so we need to go and calculate what is this component. How do we calculate that? Well, hopefully you can see the triangle. We've done this hundreds of times. So we want to work out the adjacent side. This is the opposite side and the hypotenuse. We notice that we have the hypotenuse. That's the force. Okay, we want the adjacent, so we're using cos. Cos of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, and that is when we solve adjacent we multiply hypotenuse both sides and that is where we get once again that our final formula is simply that this part becomes okay, hypotenuse which is F times cos of theta times distance and eventually that simply boils down to this very simple formula that the work done is equal to the force times the distance times the cos of the angle between the applied force and the distance that um, of motion okay or the direction of motion okay so if we look at a, our example that we just had okay look at this top example let's say the child was pulling at 20 newtons and he pulls it for 20 meters or he applies that 
20 newtons over a distance of 20 um, meters. So our applied force is equal to our uh, sorry our applied the work done by the applied force is equal to the applied force times the distance over which it was the, um, applied multiplied by cos of the angle between the applied force and the distance that it traveled. So that angle, let's say it was 60 degrees. Okay, and then what do we get? Our applied force was 20 newtons. Our distance was also 20. And our angle between the applied force and the distance was 60 degrees. Okay, and when we solve this, the cos of 60 degrees is a half. So we get 20 times 20 is 400 times a half is 200 joules. In other words, this child is applying a, or is applying a work of 200 joules on this trailer. Okay, well, um, that's all for now. In the next few videos, we'll look at a few more examples that might be a little bit more complicated. See you then.